Hi, this is my Delta. This last three years has been so amazing in Delta State. There has been lots of jobs and wealth creation across the state, infrastructural development in all sections. Old roads are wearing new looks and new ones are being constructed. Primary healthcare has greatly been improved upon. Now you can get health support with ease. Educational sector was not left out. It has received tremendous boost. This last three years has been so amazing in Delta State. Come and experience this new Delta with me. I testify. I testify. I testify. Hello, warm welcome to the program Smart Move. I am Christine Imetulu. Smart Move is a program designed by the Ministry of Information on Delta State to put Deltans in perspective as to the programs and policies of the state government towards ultimately realizing the smart agenda and that take prosperity for all Deltans, which is rapidly being achieved. Once again, you're welcome to the program Smart Move. The Delta State government, under the leadership of Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa, places premium on the comprehensive development of the education sector, especially the vocational and technical sectors. Little wonder, barely six months into his administration, one of the first bills he sent to the House for Assembly for approval was a bill on the vocational and technical education. Now, how is all of this comprehensive development of the education sector being realized in the state? Today on the program, Smart Move, the team paid a visit to the Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Honorable Chiedu Abia, to find out what the Ministry of Education has done this far towards realizing the smart agenda of the state government of relevant education policies and programs. Let's find out what he had to say. Three years down the line, I would say that we've done remarkably well in um, various areas. Essentially, the whole idea is to see how we can improve the quality of education um, across board. But certain areas have been given, um, um, a, can be considered as key priority areas. One of them is technical and vocational education, which, um, as you well know, that's one area that um, this administration has focused on very closely. I think when you look at it, the most important thing, you know, when I think about it, is that for people coming into government, it's always good to have people who have a plan, who have always prepared themselves for governance. And that's one thing Governor Kawa did. So even before he came in, uh, before he was sworn in as executive governor um, of the state, he was prepared for it. And why do I say this? Number one was that he had done all these studies and the research, which um, you know, made him to realize that technical and vocational education is the way to go. And yes, over time it had suffered in the state. So what did we do? We started by first of all um, sending an executive bill to the House of Assembly. It was one of the very first bills that he sent, I think in the, uh, within the first um, uh, 60 days of his administration. And so that gave rise to the Technical and Vocational Education Board, or the law, which um, culminated in the board being inaugurated. Now this board was given specific oversight functions for technical and vocational education. So it was sort of, it was a, a, a new area that was carved out for them because we wanted to focus on that. And then we did a lot of infrastructural upgrades. So three years down the line, three of the technical colleges are fully upgraded. Agbo, Sapele, and Ofagbe. The three others, because we have six in the state, are still at various um, stages of, of, of upgrade. That's in terms of the infrastructure. We also did focus on the, the, the um, machinery in the, in the schools as well. Um, then we focused on ensuring that we had the right caliber of teachers. But 
in all of these, and what we would always beat our chest for is that um, all the trades in, in the technical colleges have been accredited by um, the Board for Technical Education, and which is a plus for us because in all our six schools, all the trades have, been, have now been accredited, which um, in the past um, wasn't the case. So as you can see, that has technical and vocational education has taken center stage. Now, when we came in, the student enrollment numbers in, in the six technical colleges were just under, um, just over 2,000. Now it's up to just under 5,000. And so that's a 100% increase across board. Now you realize that one of the things is that you need to move from conventional education to technical um, vocational education so that people acquire skills, skills that can take them through life, skills that can make them employers of labor, and skills that can um, um, enable them fend for themselves. So that's the whole idea. So that a lot of the, um, the youths can be gainfully employed. So that's, in a nutshell, a focus on technical and vocational education by the Governor Kowa administration. Other areas, um, other areas include establishment of, of new schools, you know, which is in line with SDG 4. Um, to date, the, this administration has established um, 12 primary schools and 34 um, secondary schools, mostly in, in rural and difficult to reach terrains. And this has helped us to also reduce the out of, um, um, out of school children, because when you have schools in some of these riverine communities in, um, in the deep rural areas, then it means that the children now have education is brought closer to them. So we've done that, we've focused on that, and we've established um, those schools. Another area that we've also focused on is um, in the area of universal basic um, education. Now, um, prior to when we came in, we hadn't accessed the um, UBE funds since 2012. But in three years, we've done from 2012 to 2017. And so we're in the process of um, accessing the 2018 Funds. And this comes to about, with the, the government has put approximately 5.1 billion Naira, um, which is the equivalent or counterpart funding that has enabled them access the same amount from um, Universal Basic Edu um, Education Commission. So in total, we've had about um, 10, 10 billion Naira, which we've used, um, which has been judicious, judiciously utilized in the development of um, Universal Basic Education across the state. Well, majority of the people are in conventional secondary schools. Technical and vocational education is just a, a small percentage of our school age um, um, uh, children. Now, in, in other areas, some of the other things that um, we've done is, you know, when you look at education, it's um, all-encompassing. You know, the, the provision of quality education um, straddles things like um, infrastructure, the human capital, i.e. the teachers, the sports, or if you, if you, if you like, you, you can call it extracurricular activities, and of course, um, curriculum um, as well, and then the ability for the sciences, the labs, and, and, and so on. Now, looking at other aspects, one area that we've looked at is also teacher development. If your teachers are no good, then it's going to be garbage in, garbage out. Now, so we then took a, a very unique approach um, to it, and which was when we convened the Education Summit, one of the things that um, was highlighted was the issue of teacher quality. And so we said, how do we address this teacher quality? And having done a lot of research, we found that one of the ways is to ensure that you have the teachers well trained. They're already employed in, 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 in the employ of the state. So you're not going to terminate the appointments because if you do that, then you're going to have, I mean, the, the, the teaching workforce is quite huge in, in Delta State. So we then realized, no, what we need to do is focus on training, uh, retooling and retraining of the teachers. And this gave rise to uh, the establishment of the um, Teacher Professional Development Center, TPDC, which is, um, is in its first, the first phase is, is undergoing construction. We're now at about 65% completion. Um, of that, and that entails the admin block, which has the lecture rooms. Now, but essentially, what it is is that it is geared towards having tailor-made programs for the teachers, tailor-made programs for the teachers to be trained, and off-site, away from away from um, 
from the hustle and bustle of, of the cities. Um, and so we already have approvals to run the first set of training programs which we intend to start um, this year, even before the structure is, or the physical structure is completed. And it's probably first of its kind in, in Nigeria. That's on this scale, it's the first of its kind, which um, we know we will, will go a long way in improving teacher quality in the state. You know, we're con concentrating on our state. We have, um, even though we have a huge um, workforce here, there's still a need for additional teachers. We have more than enough teachers here, so it's just to improve them. But it would also serve as a training um, um, center, so um, you can come and utilize the facilities there because it's um, in a serene location, um, which is easily accessible from our airport here in Asaba and uh, with good road network. So it's it's for the teachers. But we hope that we would we will be able to attract people to utilize the facilities as well. We realize that, and yet again, you know, we we in finding solutions to problems, we don't just jump at it. We we look at it and we we um, discuss it extensively at the ministry level before we then go to um, to the governor with whatever proposal. He also looks at it in in very great detail. As you know, he's a very meticulous, um, intelligent politician, administrator and medical doctor, so we have to be very careful in what we take to him. But for the private schools in particular, we yes, there's been a proliferation, yes, there are a lot of unregistered schools, there are a lot of schools of very low quality, uh, whatever it is you, you like them, uh, you like to call them. Um, they also had complaints, those that are properly and um, legally registered also made a representation um, to us. What we found was that over time, over time, the process of registration had been abused. Um, over time, a lot of attention had not been paid in ensuring that um, the minimum standards are met. And so we embarked on um, a revalidation exercise, revalidation of the existing schools. And even for those that are unregistered, to try and bring them within that bracket. Um, th th this um, exercise started um, sometime in 2018. And we've only just completed the first phase, whereby we've um, issued re new licenses to the schools. Because the, in, in, in actual fact, when you look at it, the last time such an exercise was conducted was about 10 years ago. So there have also been um, fake licenses in circulation. But essentially, we've tried hard to see how we can in, in, increase or improve our oversight functions in that regard. Because we appreciate the role that the private schools play. Um, and so we need to keep tabs with them, we need to keep an eye on them, and we need to also make sure that we're, we're working very closely with them as well. So we're giving them uh, much focus. We, we're now going into the next phase, and we've also given a window of opportunity to those that have not, were not able to participate in the exercise so that, that they can come and register them. And that way it will also help us to improve our data collection as well, because then when you register, and you provide us with all the data we need, then we're able to determine um, a lot of things um, with that. But what I would also say is that for those who have failed to, or who failed to take advantage of, of the exercise and the opportunity, and those that are really, really, really very poor, of very poor standards, um, a task force will be set up and where we would then um, go and seal them up. Because we cannot afford for them to stay in business. We cannot afford for them to um, dilute the, um, the quality of education and even their, the, the, the private schools in existence, the, the legitimate ones, the legal ones and the ones that operate very high standards are also very worried about that and we have their buy-in, we have their support and we're working with them with the, with the um, respective organizations that um, oversee um, private schools to, uh, to achieve that. We're still achieving, we're, we're still achieving, we're working very hard. Now take into consideration the number of schools we have we have 1,124 primary schools. We have 465 secondary schools, and we have six technical colleges. So you can see that that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, we also have just come out of a recession. Um, but nevertheless, even with the recession, we're still able to do a lot. And able to do a lot. So have we gotten to where we hope to get to know the answer is no but it's work in progress it's work in progress there's still a lot of work because when you take the number of schools that we have and the number of um, pupils and students we have in, in, in Delta State 
as you know, we love education in this state. So we, we, we have quite a number of, um, of students and pupils to contend with vis-a-vis -vis the number of schools. But we're putting in our best, um, um, our best endeavors, the sincerity of purpose, we're doing um, the right things. And we maintain an open door policy where if there are any issues or anything, you bring them to us and we try and um, deal, deal with them. But also, we also when you move away from um, conventional education or, or, or the academics on its own, you look at the extracurricular, which is also very is vital for the development of, um, of children. And we've also looked at, um, there are a lot of things that we've, 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 we've initiated, um, this administration has initiated, and one of them is also we focus on school sports. We've tried to um, reposition school sports because there's, it's very important that children engage in, in sports or extracurricular activities. And so for school sports in particular, we also looked at partnerships with the private sector. And um, we're happy and fortunate enough to partner with one of the strongest brands in Nigeria today, Senis Bank, in repositioning our principal's cup. Um, that's a football competition for secondary schools, both private and public um, schools. We're in our third year, and just um, recently, just yesterday in fact, we had a press conference um, to um, commence the 2018-2019 the edition of it. Now then, in addition to that, the state government on its own, um, this time in partnership with, with itself, um, also is also repositioning the Headmaster's Cup, which is for primary schools as well. Um, we had a very successful maiden edition, and we're going into the second um, edition. For the very first time also, we're, we're bringing back um, school sports uh, festival and we're working on that which um, we hope that the, the, the finals it, it will hold sometime early in December as well. So those are some of the things that we've done in terms of repositioning school sports. This is aside from ensuring that schools have their inter-house sports annually. So you must have where you're, be it prim primary or, or secondary. Um, but we call on, on um, private sector that's um, um, individuals, well-meaning citizens of Delta, friends of Delta, and corporate organizations to partner with us because government can't do it alone. And so we, we hope that um, a lot of them would, would come up and, and partner um, with the state government. In addition to that also, the other things that we've put in place which um, we hope would also um, improve the morale of everybody, one of them is the, the um, Award of Excellence, and which is targeted at students and pupils that excel or do well in uh, certificate examinations. Not just the certifi certificate examinations organized by, um, by the State Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, but also by WAEC and NECO and um, the board for um, NABTEP, the board for technical um, education as well. So those that um, do very well, we recognize them, we appreciate them, and we reward them. And yet again, we're also able to partner with um, um, with a private sector organization and one of the indigenous um, leaders in the oil and gas sector, Ariton Exploration and Production Company, where every year um, they, they sponsor the Ariton Award of Excellence. We had the maiden edition last year and we're going into the second edition um, um, this year. The teachers are also not left out. Very recently we got approval for um, to also um, have um, an award for the teachers and school heads. So we're going to look out there. And that one is the, it's, it's unique because it works bottoms up. We go to the schools at all the local government um, areas and we ask students, pupils, um, teachers, and everybody to recommend who they think the, 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 um, the best teachers are those that stand out and those that have excelled in their, in, 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 in their duties. Um, so your peers are going to recommend you and it's not, we're not handpicking people. And then from there we progress to, um, to the zonals before we get to the finals. And this is specifically for school heads and teachers, both at primary and secondary school level. We hope that that would at least show that this administration, the administration of Governor Kowa, um, which everyone knows has the, has the welfare of, the, of, of, of um, the civil servants at heart, but in particular the teachers, because we know the role that teachers play in the development of um, children and so that 
your reward is not just going to be in heaven alone, but your reward would also be on earth as well. So those are some of the um, things that we've put in place three years down the line. In summary, I think we've done well. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, and um, we just ask that um, Deltons keep, um, keep faith with us because Governor Kowa is a very sincere person, and he's out here to work. He prepared himself for governance, and I know that he's delivering the dividends of democracy um, to Deltons, not just in the education subsector, but across board. Well, um, you know, everything, I would look at it from um, education subsector, the education standpoint. Um, but also, in addition to that, are we doing, Delta State is a sports-loving state. We, we, we are known for uh, sports, whether it was in the time of the Midwestern region or Ben Delta State, or now that we're, we're Delta State. Um, it's one area that we've always focused on. It's one area we've always um, excelled in. So now, look at, we have a new stadium. We have a stadium that um, has just been completed. It was, it was on the drawing board for almost a decade, but it's finally been completed. In the short time that it's been completed, we've hosted the 